And now, the way it used to be, here's Joey. Hey everybody, how you doing? Joey Ciccone with you on this lovely Friday, a post-Thanksgiving uh, show, 5 o'clock hour. We're doing a one hour today. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm full. I'm full, man. I am full, 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 full. As you are uh, driving out there, like, uh, hopefully not like maniacs, okay? But uh, I want everyone to be careful out there. I had a good one. I hope you had a good one. Uh, gave thanks, and now you're all out there trying to buy the, uh, the plasma TV. <laughs> uh, the plasma TV was on sale for $270, but if you come nine hours and wait in line, <laughs> you can get it for... 170 or so, but we'll mail you the rebate, the rebate in the mail and everything, right? Okay, don't you love it? Happy uh, Black Friday! All right, that's all I want to say. My sponsors, I want to say I had a pink box. You go in there, uh, you get the donut, Joey Ciccone, you get the coffee. All right, uh, I want you to stop in there and definitely uh, mention me. You got to mention my name. I was listening to Joey Ciccone on uh, Vegas AllNetRadio.com. Joey said I could get the coffee with the donut. Please do that. Check it out. Two locations, okay? Number one, Summerlin Hill Plaza, 7531 West Lake Mead Boulevard, Nevada, 89128. Second location is in Henderson, 10251 Southeastern Avenue, Henderson, Nevada, 89147. The first one that I mentioned in Summerlin is 24 hours, so definitely got to pop in there and... Uh, and check it out you know what i'm saying okay and uh, you make sure you tell them you know joey sent me you know that's 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 the main that's a little secret man you get a free free cup of coffee we need free things helen right absolutely you know what i'm saying uh go ahead and put that on so you're 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 with me today all right how are, are you stuffed are, are you uh, full what, what oh happened? my god i have to go back on a diet yeah we all well we all know that <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm in the gym pre-thanksgiving after this morning you know i mean it's just like you're so um, good. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, it just doesn't stop. But you know you're not going to, you know, not eat the stuff that's there. Man, you got to go all out. My second sponsor I want to talk about, all right, uh, uh, Innovative Care Physician Group. Okay, and I'm just touch on it real quick. Dr. Goldsmith, CEO of Trim Care, okay, uh, has developed a revolutionary program, uh, combinations of medication, supplements, diet, and uh behavior uh, modifications to create patients basically to lose weight man i highly recommend him and his people over there to to go check them out and uh <laughs> tell him joey sent you because i was at pink box prior and i ate a few donuts and now he sent me here to lose the weight i don't know all right right uh, <laughs> ah, laughs in the studios these guys are full too you know what i'm I saying know, but know. they're moving at a very nice level which i'm liking you know what i'm saying anyway those are my lovely sponsors, and uh, again, happy Black Friday. T did you, now, do you do this? Do you do this? Mm, uh, you know what? There's nothing I've ever seen that I wanted to stand in line for like 10 hours for. Nothing. Are you sure, like, you know, that really nice bracelet, that ring, nope. or, you know? Nope. See, I've never done it uh, personally myself, so, no. I mean... You know, and then, not, and then, you know, there's people after the, the holidays or after Christmas, you know what I'm saying? They're like, I'll just go buy it then, man. I get the first thing. Yeah, then it's on sale about like 10 days later for the same price. Right, but I ain't going to, bottom line is you're right. I ain't going to kill myself over it. Do you know what I'm saying? That's something definitely I'm not going to do. Let's hear from the lovely Caesars group and see what's happening in our lovely, lovely town, Las Vegas, Nevada, right off of the, uh, the Associated Press, okay? Um, casino giant Caesars Entertainment is appealing a bankruptcy court ruling that could put it on the hook for nearly $364 million. That's a lot of uh, dollars, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's the amount of uh, pension fund wants Caesars to pay installments for 20 years after the company's largest subsidiary filed for bankruptcy protection in January. The National Retirement Fund wants to oust Caesars, forcing it to cover the remaining cost of promised pensions. Caesars is the largest fund contributor paying 
13 million annually. The company has said it has no intention of stopping payments or leaving the fund on its own. Let me just finish up here. Caesars argued the same legal uh, protections that she let its subsidiary should protect Caesars in its case. Then you have Judge Benjamin Goldgar denied Caesars motion to extend the automatic stay on November 12th. And then Caesars filed its appeal Monday. That's right off of the Associated Press. Little thing on Caesars, where we live. Things should be uh, getting back started, you know. Uh, until Christmas time, you know what I'm saying? People are going to you know, get back to work now. You know, you, and then you bring the leftovers, too. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got to bring the leftovers, you know? You know what I'm saying? That's uh, Get rid of them. Well, yeah, you got to have the sandwich, and then <laughs> in, later on you create other ways to have the sandwich. Like, do you have the stuffing with the turkey, mayo? I like that one. <laughs> and This one is the cranberry with the stuffing, with the turkey, with the mayo, you, right? You, you like that one, okay? So, and then, mm, that's delicious. Then there comes a time where <laughs> yeah, I gotta say it, folks. You know, it's done. It's over. <laughs> Get this, you know what, out of the refrigerator. The party's <laughs> over. But we have some more pumpkin and pie. You know, let's have some of that. All right. Oh man. Okay. Cool. Cool. Got that handle. I gotta tell you about. Uh, See a little bit uh, moving, moving right along. I, I want to share this with w with you, and uh, we'll hold off on this little little brief thing I have. But uh, uh, let me tell you who's with us today, okay? And then uh, if I have time, I'll get to that before I bring him in. But uh, um, very happy, positive guy that I met. Uh, let's see, six or seven months ago, maybe, and we became friends from another place, and. We kind of relocated here, and he is a host here and does a wonderful show and a wonderful job. But uh, let me tell you about a guy named uh, Mike McGee, the man behind the wheel, a show informs and entertains anyone that drives for a living, okay? He covers various issues that may be of concern to most drivers, from drivers to taxi cabs, limousines, shuttles, buses, vans, sedans, trolleys, trolleys, okay, trolleys. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cat and school buses. That's a good one. Garbage trucks, parcel delivery trucks, and even police, fire, and rescue. He discusses topics like doorman, performance, pandering. Hmm. I'll be asking him that one. Uh, diversion, long hauling, soliciting, uh, self-defense. Cool. Matt. Reckless driving and so much more. Mike has 10 years driving experience for the garbage company, which I got questions there. Okay. All right. Does your garbage yeah. get picked up on time? Just an idea. Okay. But it wasn't him that did it, but <laughs> it, maybe the company? I don't know. And 25 years driving cabs and limousines. A lot of stories about things that happen in the back of the limousine. Living in Las Vegas since 1968. Wow, man, that's a long time. He has been, uh, I'm sorry, he has seen everything change from high-end men's clothing cars with some advertising experience along with broadcasting school education. He is a force to be reckoned with in a vehicle or on the air. And what I just want to say is, you know, in my line of work, whether, you know, in Hollywood it was the acting or the music or, or anything, you meet special people along the way. And uh, um, when someone can take the time to give you a compliment, I think that's what it's all about. You know, like Helen, very nice jacket that you're wearing. Thank you. Yes, and that's really that's all that's needed is, you know, a thank you. And the reason I'm bringing that up, it's Thanksgiving. The day after, actually, Thanksgiving. But it's still the Thanksgiving spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The spirit still stays with you a little bit because you're going to be eating the turkey and everything else. And with that being said, Mike, I want to thank you for your lovely comments that you've given me and uh, that you're going to be here shortly and I heard that you're for a loss of words. Um, <laughs> got the guys in the studio laughing today. That's that tryptophan or whatever the hell it is, right? I don't know what it is. It's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, my pal Mike's coming out here. Uh, let me just see what else is happening. Um, I don't know. Let's, uh, let, let's do this. Oh, let's do this. Yeah, maybe we'll have the guys split one and 
and you remember me talking about my sponsor and um uh dr goldsmith was here and you know he had to leave for an emergency last week he was supposed to be here but anyway came through with the uh the trim care the the bars. this is the this is the trim care bars right go Correct. ahead yeah, go ahead and ex bars. expand on it as they say well it's a uh, apparently it's all organic and it's uh, very good and it's tasty it's not like uh, plastic food right right and it's got all the protein and everything else in there he was talking about it when he's on there um I'm I'm without so the there's glasses. About, Whole there's, food. I think Go there's ahead. about six different flavors. Right. So you got this one's chocolate chip cookie dough. You got the this I like. Now I could like this one. This is the chocolate almond. Trim care. My sponsor. Call the studio, 702-483-4444. I'll give you the information on them. They're my sponsor. That's where you get these from. Okay? They're not like the regular ones that you get. In the grocery store or, you know, in the, uh, right, you know, the like uh, one of these supplement stores. Cookies and cream. Oh, and it's only 200 calories. You, yeah, you know that? Mm-hmm. For sure. Because he said. Okay, he did say that, but, you know, sometimes I don't remember, but we're going to be trying that. We'll let the guys split one for an after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dessert treat. treat special. You know what I'm saying? How lovely that is. And I have my other friend here today behind the board and what's nice is he doesn't have a microphone that's what's wonderful but you can possibly hear him from there he gets very tired sometimes because he works a lot and who and who would that be can he hear you <laughs> who, who might be operating the board tonight <laughs> That would be me, the one and only Mr. Bobcat here tonight. <laughs> Mr. Bobcat in the house. I was waiting too much for much turkey. I was waiting for him to make that move. <laughs> too much turkey, too much Stoli's vodka from yesterday. <laughs> oh, he admitted now he he admitted the uh, he admitted the vodka part. No, I wanted him to make. I work in radio. I admit to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and right now he's not on camera exactly exactly listen happy 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 black friday we're just moving along you are listening to the joey ciccone show i might have not even mentioned that all right but it's uh the way it used to be the way it is today we're kind of touching on the way it is right now all right stay with me i love seeing you i hope you're all listening i'll be right back with my special guest mike Thanks so much. Joey Ciccone back with you. Black Friday. Let me let me just tell you what that is real quick, man. You know, uh, you might want a definition on that. Uh, Black Friday is uh, when re basically retail stores finally had positive balance sheets as uh, obsessed to uh, bends in the red or the negative, okay? So... That's why we have Black Friday. So, man, they want to get rid of the inventory, get some new stuff in there, and boom. That's why that happens. Well, the man sitting next to my right, uh, Mr. Mike McGee, like I, like I told you, I gave him some nice accolades there at the beginning. And um, it's, it's a day like, you know, Mike, what I was saying was, uh, you know, it's a day after Thanksgiving, but we still give thanks for a few days. And... Uh, I, I wanted to tell you in person that uh, some of the things you've stated, some of the things you've texted me have meant a lot. We get, I get a lot of things from fans and everything, mm -hmm. but from someone in the business, someone that I think is very you know, intellectual and very intelligent, uh, coming from you and some of the things we've talked about as friends, it means a lot, man. It means a lot to me, and on this day of giving thanks and... and uh, uh, the week of giving thanks let's put it that way wanted to have you here and i was so happy that you were able to make it hey my pleasure and man you know your show here is still happening correct hey, yes sir okay it and is. what i want to say is move up on that mic a little bit and let right. me let me hear how's big this? mic because i'm happy you're here man how's this Can you, hear me? you sound like a nice All jazz right. jazz singer baby well I believe everything happens for a reason. Hmm. And before I met you, I was just under the spell of Helen. 
believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. And um, I saw her first, and then I met you. Now, are we talking about in the yeah. location we were at? Yeah. We don't need to name the location. You, you know, know, it was a, it was a little house party, you could say. Oh, that's nice, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. With no music, you know. Now, the food no was... No music happening. For, the food, forget about it, but go ahead. But, uh, yeah, and so you started to introduce yourself, and then you said Miles Davis, and then my I perked up. Yes. Uh, right there, I thought, wow. You know, it was to me, it was almost like meeting Miles himself. You know, oh, just man. to meet somebody that, That's you know, has got to be damn good to play with Miles, man. I, you know I mean? Wow, man. And you're just in the background clapping your hands. You know, you got to be good <laughs> to do that. So, just to, be on yeah. the, just to be on the bandstand, you know? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I watched your show. I know this is supposed to be about some of what I do, but. No, uh, that's what it, I want it to be about what you do. Yeah, I observe, man. I observe. I'm a watcher, a uh, thinker. And uh, before I got into driving, I was actually, and you remind me again, into men's clothing. Oh, we're going to, because okay. I'll tell you right now, we, me and Helen, we figured this one out already. We said, okay. yeah. Where's my next suit? That's who we're at. <laughs> <laughs> That's who we're at, baby. Well, That's who we're at. You know, I need to put Mr. Ciccone in something new now. Um, <laughs> you know, I had come back here from Denver and lucked up and got a job at the record store, Odyssey Records, which was on Oki and Las Vegas Boulevard, and later got a job at Cousins Men's Store and really didn't know where I was. Just give me a date, just you know, for, for our listeners. We're talking late 70s. Nice. Oh, okay. man, I love those times. All right. And, um, <laughs> the way it used to be. I um, got this job after six weeks of persistence, 300 phone calls. <laughs> I mean, I just wouldn't go away. Right. I'd show up, and the manager would say, listen, don't come back. I'll call you. you right, know? right. We don't have any openings right now. And then I'd come back a few days later, and he'd say, man, you know, are you retarded? I, I told you, don't, <laughs> don't come back until I call you. And I come back again, and he said, I'm going to get security to 86 you off the property. Now, I love uh, it, because it, that's what we call haunting them. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but eventually I got the job. I learned a few things from the late, great Bernie Schultz, who uh, okay. was a, a little Jewish guy. He smoked Dunhill. I don't know if a lot of people know what Dunhill sure, cigarettes sure, are. Sure, but maybe if you don't know out there, yeah, Dunhill, been around, big name. Very expensive cigarettes. Try, yeah, you know. if, if, yeah, that's just the cigarettes. The cigars ain't cheap either. But Right, and the holder, he, they always wore these little holders, and they'd stick the cigarette out, and they'd talk to you with the glasses with the little chains on them. Nice, so he had the glass with the chain, and he's got the holder. And the Dunhill. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's longer, folks. <laughs> I know you, you try to envision it, it's longer. Right. And guys would come in the <laughs> store, and I'd look at him, and he'd nudge me and say, that's, uh, that's Tony Spilatro. I said, really? That's, that's a Jilly Rizzo. Man. He's, he's, he's Sinatra's guy. And, and, and all these things were happening so fast, and I noticed all the guys would be moving fast, talking fast. <laughs> and I'm like, What's going on with the salesman? You know, and <laughs> I couldn't believe how fast these guys were talking and grabbing suits. And so then I later found out... <laughs> It was a substance that made them talk fast, yeah. talk fast <laughs> and wait on two guys at the same time and right, you know, just pile right. suits on top of each other. You know what I'm thinking? Whoa, exactly. I was like so naive, man. Well, man, of course, you know, it was, come on, it was the year, uh, what, early 70s? Late 70s. Oh, late 70s, late, late 70s. 70s. Still a great time, please, yeah. man. And uh, Guys had know. to wear a suit to a show, you know. See, I love, it. see, here, this is what tells me that not that you've tuned in to, to what I'm doing, but, yeah, this is what we talk about on the show. And, yeah, yeah, you know, the way people dressed, the class, the comps, the things you're talking about and everything. But today's my friend Mike's day. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I mean, see, he, he, that's the love that you bring. He, he steps into the studio, and he goes right into my area, you know. We got the right. dice. We right. got the little props from him. He goes right <laughs> into my area. Which right. I love, and I please, folks, come on. I could talk about it for the next three hours, and you'd love it. And then I'd make some phone calls, and you'd love it even more. But, uh, you know, it's about you, man. It's about meeting you and, and what you put off. And, uh, and I will 
I will quote someone here on the premises. Uh, it's a great one. Uh, someone told me here, you have had a very colorful life. N you're just not, not just a stand-up guy, but uh, the best they ever worked with. Wow. That tells you a lot about a guy. And, 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 and trust me, folks, not just from being from the East Coast, but I, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character. So it, it, sometimes it's not about someone giving you a compliment, but it's the vibe which you feel, feel the love. And before we even take off with you, my lovely friend, I want to say that you had mentioned our 9-11 show, which meant a oh, lot to yeah. us. Sure. Because uh, that, that, that came from the heart, and, 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 and uh, Mike had made a comment, if I can, if yeah. I can re-say it, please, sure. that it should be shown you know, maybe every 9-11 every in all right. the Clark County schools. And That's right. I think I'd be honored. Just, just to bring us to what, Mike, to remember that day, uh, did the show have impact to you? I think we had a oh, stewardess. Absolutely. We had the stewardess here with telling that she was flying them over. Not her personally. Right, she was right. on the plane. Yeah. I kid you not. I, I'm. I'm. I, I had chills, man. You know the goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were here. We were like it was like you know it was just chilling, and it was so sincere. And the reason why she had never told that story. Uh, my wife happens to work with her, and right. and she had never told that story to anybody. So wow. when she told it here, anyway, Mikey. The bottom line is, let's get to some Q and A. By the way, did you eat a lot yesterday? No, you no, didn't. Man. You didn't have much. I, I um, I you know, no seconds. Let's put it like that. I get no seconds. Oh, I got issues with my weight. <clears throat> Um, well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, wouldn't know it now, yeah, but right, I was man. 300 pounds at one time. Are you serious? Yeah. So, and it's so easy. One pound becomes five, five becomes 10. So I have to weigh myself every day. And um, if I start to gain, I have to cut back. Um, right, it's just but a I mean, battle, you know. Well, I'm in that boat. I mean, not not overweight, but we're always trying to, you know, go from that, that five's got to come down. You got your yeah. up five, you got to come down five, you're yeah. up five and everything. But I guess the main thing is the bottom line is your health. And um, Ron Garrett, a friend that you probably know, sure. and, and a, a very, very sweet professional, battled with his weight, and he had to w take off like a lot of weight from mm -hmm. what he had told us uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, mm -hmm. we know it's not easy. But, buddy, we were reading a little bit about how's the show going, first of all, and when does it air? We're on every Monday at 6 p.m., Okay. Uh, Behind the Wheel, that's the title of the show. Please. Okay. And that's every Monday at what time six again? PM 6 p.m. to 7. 6 to 7. Okay. All right. And just cu and uh, just, just touch on for our listeners uh, uh, what the show in details. Now, I read it in your bio. Sure. You cover a lot of things. You've done a lot of things, you know. But, uh, you know, I had here, uh, you know. Now, are these some of the people that come on the show that have driven – cabs limos i know you did but like shuttle buses vans right and then the trolleys i laugh but it, yeah it probably well the drivers right. are who i'm after right and then cat and school buses yeah the dude garbage you got a truck i drove a garbage dude, truck dude you gotta tell uh, we gotta do that story like we'll, we'll probably wait for the next segment but okay. I, we gotta do we gotta do the garbage thing and All then right. uh like some of these other things that we were talking about Dor dorman performance right right I don't mean to be ignorant, but are we talking about the doorman, the guy who opens the door? Yeah, on the, the front door, the front of the house, as it's called. Okay. Uh, the doorman controls the traffic, and some of the hotels, some of the properties, the doorman will, um, uh -huh. they expect to be paid in order for you to get a load. Five, six, you know, five or six guys come out, they're going to a gentleman's club. That's eighty dollars a man now. Okay, let's clarify because uh -huh. I, I I don't mean to be like ignorant uh -huh. about it, but are we talking about like limousine situation here? We're talking both, but okay, primarily do limousine drivers do this. But doorman, have you heard that that term? Okay. Yeah. All right. So fill me in on that term. Now, some hotels, it's no doorman; they have a valet guy. Okay. All right. All right. That would. Okay. It's almost like the nicer the hotel, the nicer his outfit. Okay, oh, I love like it. he's going to start a parade. He's got the yeah. big jacket and the hat, everything mm. but the scepter. To, to I've seen. Around. Okay, yeah, yeah. San Francisco. But um, right. yeah. you pull up there. 
Okay. And I got six guys that I can give to any of my other guys, but you're up. And I'm going to walk around to you, and I'm going to shake your hand. And there better be something in your hand. I got you shake. Yeah, Gabish. Yeah. And, so. I, and by the way, folks, we're not talking about uh, turkey and stuffing. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, you know what I'm saying? Right. A little Scott Oil, as we say in Italian, okay? Which basically confirms into money, all right? Yes. There better be a little tip there. That's correct. Yeah, so continue. So it's actually half. So if I'm going to get 300, I got to give you two. Nice. Wow. Or I can't come back. Wow, man. You know, if I don't like it or I complain, I can't come back. Because it's your property. You're right. the boss. I got you. You know, so. I got you. So it's yeah, just the so way it's always been. I just, I love that, man. And just, I mean, and, and these other ones we're going to cover. When we come back from our, our, our break, we're going to talk about, I want to, I got to do the garbage thing because, not the garbage thing, mm -hmm. the garbage job. Yeah. Because I'm sorry. There's a lot of carcasses that are going to be out That's there. That's true, man. <laughs> I've seen all kinds of stuff. And the, the things you've seen oh. I want to know about. I have some beautiful questions set up sure. for you. Sure. Uh, you're my friend. I want to say that uh, on the air. And, uh, you Appreciate know, it. you're a brother that loves jazz. And, oh, and that's a whole nother show in itself. Yes. Uh, I do want to plug Miles Ahead. Go see Cheadle do what he does, man. And, you know, give him props for giving it a shot. I happen to be there with the guy seeing the real thing. But... Uh, I wasn't a consultant on the show, but right. it's okay. It's all cool. Listen, we love you. You're watching Joey Ciccone. It's a little mixture today on Friday, not Friday the 13th, <laughs> Black Friday. Yes. Yeah, Black Friday, not Friday the 13th. Yes. Right? I'm here with my friend Mike McGee. That's a nice uh, Irish name, isn't it? Yes. He's got, he's got a beautiful show here. He's a beautiful person. Joey Ciccone, we'll be right back with you. Everybody, Joey Ciccone back with you. The way it used to be, the way it is. My special guest, a fellow host here at Vegas All Net Radio, uh, Mike Behind the Wheel. Do yes, I, am I saying it right? That is. Behind the Wheel, uh, mm. Mike McGee. And it happens to be a personal friend also. So the bottom line is... Uh, if you heard earlier in the show or if you just tuned in, you know, he's done some incredible jobs that where you've had to be behind that wheel. Now, my brother back uh, back east is uh, a truck driver that drives uh, throughout the United right. States. Over the I, road. I, I know what he goes through, mm -hmm. and it's like that ain't an easy gig. But we got some questions for, for, for Mike. Uh, man, you know, we, we, we get to situations with some guests that we just want so many hours and times with. Which we'll we'll have time and we'll do do other things again. But anyway, so you drove a garbage truck. I did. And go ahead, just fill us in. I would like it lost fate to start. Well, yeah, you were here since 1968. Yes. So go ahead, take over on that. So. So yeah. um, I'm I'm doing the retail thing and benefits are like nil in retail. So um, 1983, 84ish. Yeah, you ain't making nothing in you retail, know, yeah. Yeah, so um, now at the men's store, Cousins Men's Store, which is what it was called, we had a $3 million inventory. We carried the largest selection of Brioni suits, Brioni of Rome, which retail now for five grand. Right, folks, Italian clothing. That's true. Mm. We had Artioli shoes, we had uh, ah. Hermitage uh, shirts. Uh, in, in, in the early 80s, these were $300 shirts. Yeah. A lot of people would come in and they thought it was 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. okay. And they'd look at a suit and they thought the suit was, oh, 150 bucks. And then they'd get up to the counter and they'd see the bill is like, you know, eight grand for a suit, a tie, a shirt, one shirt, a pair of shoes. Well, sure. And they'd be so embarrassed. Some of them would go ahead and buy it anyway, just out right. of embarrassment. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm but, sure. you know, um, after that, uh, I left there and I decided to start selling cars. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And um, from there, my son is about to be born and I realized I have no benefits. And so I began to dump the garbage and I began to smell the garbage and I began to say to myself, this is the smell of money. This is the smell of money. Every time I dumped the garbage, I'd say, this is the smell of money. So I went to truck driving school, 
I got a CDL, yeah. Class A license. Right, I, right. I go to the garbage company. They won't hire me. Uh, again, I got to be persistent. I learned that one of the supervisors is going through a divorce. And I get to know him, and I find out that he doesn't have a, a lady. He's, right. so, he's in such a battle with his ex. Right. He, and he works all the time, <clears throat> so he has no time to meet women. I have a cousin, very much like Helen. Yeah. You know, stops traffic like she does. <laughs> okay. Oh. So I introduced the two of them at a picnic. Now, I don't know what happened. All I know is they disappeared for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> the next day I had a job, okay? And I worked there for 10 years, and I drove a tractor trailer. Eventually, I, I worked my way up from the leach where you're grabbing the garbage cans to with the older drivers and just driving up and back to the landfill. Yeah, but the gig, so the gig I thought was, is that what you started with, going to get the garbage yeah, cans? You're pitching, that whole yeah, you drive what they call a leach. Is that what it's called, yeah. man? Women do it, too. You won't see many of them. But, um, yeah, you see a lot of women. And, uh, man, it's, uh, it's a workout, uh, especially with those hot suits. You know, and those now, they do get paid well. Oh, yeah. Okay, they yeah. do get paid well, but it's, it's sure. a very physical job. Because think about it. Have you ever put the garbage out before? And you're like, man, on. You know, I put, this, I put this garbage out. I'm glad I don't have to lift this and throw it in the truck tomorrow. Right. I feel sorry for a guy. That's actually, that's actually why. No, I'm serious. I go out there and it, you know, because we work nights, and if we're not doing a show or something, right. But you're out there during that time. If I see him, you know, you need something to drink, you know, like that. And you know, I'm always trying to uh, be nice to him. But that's an interesting gig, and I'm sure you saw some like really crazy things back in All the day laid stuff. out because it, there stuff. wasn't that dude that came around creeping. You know, oh, don't worry about it. Put the couch out. There. It'll be gone in the morning, and the garbage man won't take it. Yeah. Because it'll be gone. <laughs> right. Well, you know, some of the guys will, uh, let's say some of the nicer neighborhoods. <clears throat> yeah. They'll come through and um, they'll see something and they'll ask the homeowner, can I come back later and pick this up? Might right. be a vacuum cleaner. Nice. A big screen that just yeah. had a, you know, a minor thing wrong with it. Right. And they're wealthy enough to where this, you know, oh, the big screen doesn't come on. Let's just get rid of it. Go get another one. Right. Um, but, yeah, that, that, uh the thing about the garbage company, though, is that it was set up like a prison, and they had armed guards and barbed wire fences, and a lot of guys that got jobs there did come out of prison. So it kind of reminded you of where you just came from. So are we like late you know? 70s, early 80s now? We're talking, uh, we're talking actually into the m mid 90s. Wow, okay. man. Okay. All, All right. right. Now... Can we mention that? Because the only one I know is when I when I came from L.A. The only one I know is the one I know. Silver State Disposal. Oh no, it's not. That's not mine. But that's all right. Yeah. Republic's mine. Republic. This is before Republic. Okay. Yeah. The way it used to be. Right. Richie Isola, Johnny Isola. They, all paisans. Yes, they own the company, <laughs> and uh, I happened to meet the good, late great Herb Tobin, who was a very good friend of theirs for 30 years. And I worked for him as well. But driving limo two nights for him, I actually made more money than 40 hours on the garbage truck. Of course, man. Okay. Now, here, here's a guy. I got to put the props out, man. You know, the way I was raised, you know, a lot of my friends and fans know I was raised, you know, from back east. We just learned to do things ourselves, man, from the car on down to everything. But here's what I want to do a shout out for Mike, a guy that definitely is not lazy to work. The guy who works, and look at all the jobs he's had and oh, everything. Yeah. Uh, I got one even better. So right now that we're on it, uh, we need a limo story. All uh, right. So we got uh, we got um, eight minutes. We're good. So we got to have a limo story, and I got some questions here for you. But, you know, a cool limo story. You always hear, sure. you know. I'll give you my favorite story. Is uh, I'm at... Turnberry Place. Know it well. Okay. And Paradise. they had a private club called the Sterling Club. Still around, right? Okay. They closed it. The building's still there. Oh, the Ster so Sterling Club yeah. is closed. Yeah. And so uh, <clears throat> there's a line of limousines. It's almost the same way as like the Academy Awards or the Grammys. You're in a line right. of, uh, you know, 10, 15 limousines. So in front of me is a Rolls Royce for Jack Nicholson. Hmm. I'm picking up the developer for the Fountain Blue in Miami and Turnberry Place, Don Sofer. Right. 
So there are so many people standing around that Rolls Royce that want pictures, they want kisses, they want hugs, they want something from Jack Nicholson. Sure, yeah. Even the look, you know, right. just the look, you know. So he comes walking up and he sees all these people and they're Jack, Jack, and he just gets in next to and sits next to me and said, "I'm just not up. I'm not up for it. Can you can you just take me? <laughs> just let's go. Let's go." And I said, "Oh, okay." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, you can tell him to get out, right?" So I'm driving him. Is he in the front with you? Yeah, he's sitting right there. I'm not on. He's not even in the back. It's so, like the front seat. So uh, my boss calls me and says, uh, "How come you're not out in front?" They're waiting on you. I said, well, I got uh, Jack Nicholson in the car. What are you doing with him in the car? He, he just got in. Well, you're not there to pick him up. And I said, listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him the phone, and you can tell him. <laughs> he says, never mind. So I'm driving in. He says nothing. I say nothing. Yeah. So as a rule, so you don't say the wrong thing, if they don't talk to you, you don't talk to them. Exactly, because believe it or not, in L.A., I had to do some runs in a limousine, and it was uh, pretty trippy. Right. Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. I had some big celebs, and I got I used to get lost sometimes. They get pissed, too, man. I'm like, <laughs> made a wrong turn. Relax. Take it easy. I'll get you there. You know, so definitely didn't last too long on that right. one. <laughs> so we're driving, and then we get to the MGM, and this gate opens up, and I figure I'll never see him again. You know? right, right. So I said, you know, Mr. Nicholson, i got to ask you something. He said, what's that? I said, you know, uh, I'm a big fan. He said, oh, thank you. I said, but you know, it just seems like in all of your movies, you always get laid. <laughs> and he said, yes, and in between. Right, but uh, now I'm thinking of some of the movies where he, ha he hasn't got laid. Well, th there's a couple, but it sounded but it, good. It, it, I couldn't think of, of those. Yeah. Well, maybe he didn't do a bucket. I, fact, maybe he didn't do bucket list. Yet. I was gonna say, right? Oh no, yeah. no, it's all right. No, I always look. If Jack's not getting laid, I'm not watching. <laughs> I, I really don't want to watch him. <laughs> well, I don't getting either, laid. To be, I mean, just the honest, implication. You know? I'm happy for him. You know, yeah. what's the one with uh, my one girl from Chicago? I'm trying to think. The blonde. Uh, I know oh, the movie. I can't, I can't I know think the movie right now. I can't think where of where it. he's like he's schizo. He's nuts. He's got a move thing. Right, right. You know? I remember. But as good as it gets. Yes, as good right. as it gets. Mm -hmm. And I think he gets late. Yeah, he does. <laughs> There's only been a couple. <laughs> All right. So listen, we talked about the garbage truck. I love this. We got a few minutes before break. We are with my friend Mike McGee behind the wheel. Anything behind the wheel you want to ask him? There's a lot of other things too. Call in 702-483-4444. Black Friday. You know, I'm glad we're here because I don't want to be out there with nut jobs going nuts right. over 75 cents. And then, you know, you got to get next to the El Dorado. It's just not fun. It's not a good idea. Right. And we don't want that. So, listen, we got a few more minutes before our next segment. Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm just looking for the question I want to ask you. Uh, well, what gig was the best, man? You know. Out of all the, you had the limo gig, you had the gar uh, garbage right. gig, you had the uh, apparel for, you know, the apparel is right. nice if we knew someone that had a truck that could drop some suits off right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I got to tell you, I'm living the dream right now. Um, man, that's nice. Being that's, here. that's nice to hear. Man, that's nice to hear. No, yeah. let me, you mean being where, here in Vegas? Yeah, or? man. I'm, I'm, I got a radio show in the entertainment capital of the world. Beautiful. Okay, so right. yeah, I pinch myself, okay, because it's real. I'm here, and let's know. and let's make this clear to the listeners. Right. How long has this been going on? Eleven years. We've been on the air. Right. right now, right. you've worked in other stations and different things, but you've been doing it, dude. And that's before I run to this break here, man. Mm -hmm. I just wanna I wanna bring up that point that, uh, you know. It, it's very simple, Mike, because, you know, right now I hear someone out, ask this, ask this. Sure. How do you mix driving with the broadcasting? So you like this. I know you did studying with broadcasting, mm -hmm. but there's something about it in your blood. Mm -hmm. I, and the driving was the gig, but then the broad, you, li you like what you're doing. I do. Because my <laughs> audience used to be teenagers. I used to, I'd rent a ballroom at Caesars in the early 80s when I was at Cousins in Caesars. And so these youngsters could come there and dance because there was nowhere, even now, for teenagers to go. Where do they go? There's no teen clubs here, you see. 
So I used to have these dances every Friday night, uh, and I'd rent a ballroom, and the hotels didn't like it. They didn't want all these youngsters in there because they couldn't gamble. Hmm. But um, I made a lot of money doing that, you know what I mean? Right. And so, uh, yeah, I loved it, man. And uh, gradually the uh, the hotel said, well, we don't want these kids in here. So, And I was so naive about gangs. I didn't realize that there was a gang problem here. Now, where are you from originally? From Chicago. You Really? Yeah. Where about? Yeah, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Oh, man. You know, I was born in New York but raised in, in Cicero and Chicago Heights. Okay. South side. Most of my family's in Chicago right now. Right now, my daughter just came from college in Wisconsin. She's down there. You know, they uh -huh. just finished Thanksgiving. She went to see them and everything down there. Sure. Then she goes back to Stevens Point. But, yeah, mm -hmm. all our family's in Chicago right now. Right. And uh, it's not, like, super, super cold, but yeah. it's getting there. Yeah. And on that note, listen, I'm with my pal Mike. Man, sweetheart of a guy, hanging out here with my manager and my uh, producer, Helen, uh black friday gl glad we're not out there going nuts with people joey ciccone the way it is the way it used to be but we'll be right everybody joey ciccone back with you ah so nice man to have mike mcgee here you know he's he's i consider him a pro because uh he's just a good broadcaster and knows what he's doing and it's nice when two pros kind of hang out and and, and share stories he, he's been giving us a little bit of everything, and it, it, it's like the comfort food we had yesterday. <laughs> it's very comforting. You know what I'm saying? Well, Mikey, if it would be cool, we, we'd like to ask you some other things. And, sure. uh, you know, um, we got to do another show, you know, where we'll, we, we talk about jazz and everything, because just because I was up in it, right, don't mean you don't know about it. Mm -hmm. You understand what sure, I'm saying? Sure. You could, you, I know you dug into a lot of things. I was talking to Ryan out here, and he, you know, he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 Mike knows his jazz and likes his jazz, which we've talked about. You know what I'm trying to say? Sure. But uh, getting back behind the wheel, you know, now now Uber, right? Am I saying it right? Uber. Uber. Uber, Uber, yeah. Uber, Uber. You know, I got that accent, you know. <laughs> you know. But Uber, now, wh where does that fall in? Does that affect what you're doing? Does that affect oh, Vegas? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, it's a real thing. You know, uh, right. it depends on who you talk to. Um, Las Vegas, probably the uh, people that control the taxi cab and limousine industry as we know it are not glad they're here. But at the same time, um, everything Uber's doing, the cab companies could have done. Right. You know, it's not like they're doing something that was that new. Five years ago, uh, you had that much of a head start. Unfortunately, they are now talking about leasing cabs, things that they should have been doing. So with my show, man, I like to uh, stir things up. Right. Uh, I've worked at six cab companies, and uh, some are different, some are the same. Right, right. Uh, but the one thing's for sure is it is a, a, a long 12-hour shift, and when you're done, you are in no shape to do much else but get ready for the next day yeah man you know yeah. i mean you, you see it you know you see all different kinds of jobs but uh right you don't know what the person goes through day in and day out plus me just being italian i don't like anybody behind me at <laughs> all i just it's right mirrors or no mirrors yeah. that's just a whole other thing so i think you know you got to hand it to some of these guys how about like the impaired drivers in vegas you run across oh lots of i know you run yeah. across it oh, but yeah, you know yeah. you, you got to be able to move fast and and uh, and well it's not only the driver it's <clears throat> it's the people you pick up what uber has done and and uh lyft they've made it s safe for the drunks to go to the neighborhood bar and get smashed and not get behind the wheel you know, you, you get I in think, the car and it's I a good li thing. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, DUIs actually go down as Uber comes on. Uh, there are fewer crashes. But if you <clears throat> look at what the uh, president wants to do of that company, the CEO. Very good. Uh, okay, good. Let me ask you. Let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about the pandering. I was seeing here, you know. Right. And I hope I was reading it right. But I was yeah. just seeing, like, you know, how does that come into I mean, is that because when you're out there driving you see all these different things you know what i mean well, from behind the wheel it makes yeah, sense yeah i see a lot more than you might see right 
Well, pandering meaning, is meaning you see a lot right. more. Um, Joy, pandering has to do with making arrangements for a prostitute to uh, hook up with a John. Okay. And some of the, of the escort services are real aggressive about this. Um, they offer you a lot of money. Personally, I always refer people to the to Perump because it's it's legal. Okay. But a lot of people don't want to go to Perump. Right. So now, if you wanted to just you know you want to go off the limb a little bit, your boss is like you know, hey man, you know you got to make this run. You want to just go wacky and say you know, uh, sweetheart, get back there. I'll take you out to Perump, but it's going to cost you this amount. Well, it's a flat rate, you know, two hundred bucks to go up there and back. Yeah, but it's four hundred, right? It's two hundred to go up there and back. Yeah, but it's another two hundred no. in your pocket. No, it's more than that. Okay. It's about five in your pocket. So that's if you, you could do the run, right? If you're allowed oh, yeah. and you're free, you could do the run. Yeah. If they're willing to wait the time, the almost two-hour trip to go right. up there right. and back. Let me ask you something because, you know, time time is, is, is slipping on us. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, yes. and man, I've had a lot of guests and everything, but mm. I've, I've, it's like sitting in my house just talking with you. And my next question would be, uh, may I fill that drink for you? You know, but we're actually in the studio, but mm -hmm. it's hanging out like we're uh, right. hanging out in the corner. But I got I got to throw this at you. Sure. Uh, um, what are you thankful for, my friend? I am thankful for every day that I can get out of bed, man, and put my pants on. As far as you know, every day above ground is a good day for me because I've been there. You know, I've seen death. It didn't take me. God said, "Okay, that's what it looks like." I'm gonna let you slide, all right? Now, what are you gonna do about it? And that's where I'm at, you know. I wanna, I wanna go out. I wanna do something that leaves a mark. I think you've done that, and you've put beautiful, uh, not ideas. You put great things into people's minds that are behind the wheel, experiences that they would never know, mm -hmm. and hopefully they can learn from some of those things. And you know. Maybe know what to do right, you know what to do wrong, and everything. Sure, man. I tell you, you've been an incredible guest. Thank you. You, you've, uh, you've been a really uh, great person, man. With the, with the comments you make, man. Um, I take them serious. Good. And I'll tell you why I take them serious is because there's a lot of jealousy in the world, and mm -hmm. it doesn't take a lot to say. You are a stand-up person, and and I respect you, man. It doesn't take a lot to do that. And that's for you. That's, and sometimes people just can't get those words out. So, uh, as yesterday being Thanksgiving, and the people that can't get those words out, I'll get it out for you. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to say thank you for being a wonderful guest. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Joey Ciccone Show here on Black Friday with a great host. And I want you to listen to his show, Mike McGee. Mike, one more time, the show, please. Behind the Wheel, 6 o'clock every Monday, 6 p.m. from 6 to 7. Tune in. We'll expect you. I highly recommend it. Joey Ciccone signing off. I'll see you next Friday. Until then, have a wonderful, wonderful evening.